Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this woo woo stuff. Like, you know, when the secret came out, everyone was like, oh, the secret. It was either you're on board with it or you're like, there's a whole bunch of hogwash. Yeah. Either way, man, it's a powerful practice. And mm. I think it's really important. I'm happy that we're talking about this, especially by the time that this comes out. I think it's going to be right around um, the New Year's. So people will talk about like, I'm going to have my I'm going to have my New Year's resolution. Great. With what Brian and I are going to go over today, pull in and listen, give it a go. If you're like, this is some scum, like, I don't know what these guys are talking about. Cool. Just hang out with us. Hang here. We're going to break this down and we're going to invite you to bring visualization into your resolutions. <music> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Paul <laughs> and Brian. It's more than it's more than black or white podcast. Hey, listen, but guess what? If you're coming back, thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate your feedback. We appreciate you subscribing and supporting these messages that we're putting out there. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Whoever recommended you, I'm going to give them a big hug. And uh, I appreciate you all for being here. I'm Paul. This is Brian. You know, Ebony and Ivory of health. Ebony and Ivory of health and well being. But <laughs> that's it. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Gonna our costume. Uh, that's going to be our Halloween costume next year too. Okay. All right. I like that. I'm visualizing us at a piano, side by side on a keyboard. Oh Lord. Yeah, I'm visualizing it, man. Um, and speaking of why, why would you visualize it, Paul? Does that actually work? It does, Brian. Would you be man. surprised? Visualization is a powerful practice. I huh. think we should probably talk about that today. What do you think? Yeah, why not? I got nothing to do for in the next hour. What the hell? Let's do this. Let's do <laughs> Let's this. Do so, in case you didn't know by that um, corny ass uh, back and forth, we're going to talk today about we're going to talk today about <laughs> visualization. Okay, what? So, but first of all, B, so what, when you think of visualization, right, I know you have thoughts based on your experience, but what do you, what's like, when you talk to people, other people about it, like, what do they usually say about it, bro? Oh, they're like, yeah, 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 uh-huh. And that's it. They just shake their head like, like a bobble head, but they don't do it. And I think they don't, they don't do it is because they don't understand the power that's behind it, but they don't know how to do it. Or it's, it's science hasn't quote unquote, science hasn't proved it yet that it works, but it's been stuff that gurus have been using, you know, all through their life. You know, I mean, it'd be it'd like, I mean, you look at any guru, whether it be like, you know, uh, the Buddha, Christ, they all use visualization to actually heal their people or heal people they came in contact with. So we all have that potential in us. Yeah. You just need to know how to harness it and do, and do that. And a lot of people they don't take the time to kind of learn it or they're like, Oh, it's just like, yeah, I get it. It's like positive thinking. It's like, woo woo, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But there's so many tools and attributes that you need to apply for visualization to actually work. It takes time and it takes effort, just like anything else it takes time and effort. But if you know how to visualize, visualize and you start seeing things manifest, you're going to be like, Oh, okay. Like, you have the power to create your reality. You don't realize this. A lot of things that I have right now, I would have thought would be impossible, say, two years ago, a year ago, six months ago. You know, a lot of things we talked on off camera, like I would like, I was, you know, for example, like, you know, one of my businesses was like really like down and out. And uh, I use visualization. And within the last like year, it just not only was it down and out, it's flourished to like a level that I would have never even like thought of, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I use this techniques and I use a lot of this stuff to get where I am today and to plan my future going forward. Yeah, brother. Thank you for that. So much, so many, so many gems you just said in there. And um, I want to start off with what you hear about visualization. Cause it's a lot of what I hear too, especially when you, I heard you say the term woo woo. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this woo woo stuff. Like, you know, when the secret came out, everyone was like, oh, the secret. It was either you're on board with it or you're like, there's a whole bunch of hogwash. Yeah. Either way, man, 
it's a powerful practice. And mm. I think it's really important. I'm happy that we're talking about this, especially by the time that this comes out. I think it's going to be right around um, the New Year's. So people will talk about like, I'm going to have my I'm going to have my New Year's resolution. Great. With what Brian and I are going to go over today, pull in and listen, give it a go. If you're like, this is some scum, like, I don't know what these guys are talking about. Cool. Just hang out with us. Hang here. We're going to break this down. And we're going to invite you to bring visualization into your resolutions. Brian hit on a lot of powerful things and important things. And we're going to cover them. I just want to lay out this visualization piece because visualization is, is again, it's a it's an age-old practice. And it also requires us to do something that's very unique to us as humans, and that's to think. Okay, it means that we get to pull in and start to create something that we want in our life. Brian mentioned it just now when he talked about what's going on with the business, right? Uh, when it wasn't doing great, he was he visualized what it was, what it was like it flourishing. And we're going to dive into what that entailed. And another thing that I want to highlight that Brian said is that this is free of being some like I'm going to. Tomorrow, I'm going to start visualizing and be great at it. Nah, 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 nah. Let's put that out there right now. This is about patience, about presence. It's about practice. Practice what is happening, what you're doing. And and, and listen, B, let's start to dive in. Um, listen, first of all, when it comes to visualization, I think it's important that we recognize that you, and Brian, you said it, you create your reality. Percent, absolutely, no questions about it. You can point fingers. You can play the victim role. All that stuff, like it, that's your reality. <laughs> you know? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Right, that's the thing that 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 I think is so ironic, right? Because people, and I'm going to speak for myself. I've had these situations that have played out in my life, and I'm like, this isn't even my fault. Mm -hmm. This is bullshit. This is somebody else's fault. Yet then when I like later on, when I look back on it, I'm like, I had been, I had had this picture in my head that this was going to end like this. Yeah. I had it in my head, B. Like, and it came across as like different thoughts, different beliefs, different, um, different words and communication. But I was visualizing an ending in a certain way that I was blaming someone else for. Mm -hmm. The power of, of, of the, of the part of like, we create our reality. So B, like you, you're like my Bill Nye science guy, man. Talk to the, talk to the people <laughs> about. Um, I'd like to talk to get into. I guess, like, I guess, for lack of a better term, like the basics of visualization, right? Like, and um, man, when we're talking about basics of visualization, we want to bring this to the science piece, because. Brian and I have both heard so many people talk about like that's some woo-woo bullshit. Mm -hmm. And we wanna, we wanna, again, because this is more than black or white, we wanna take you into the science piece of this, man. So B, can you can you hit us with some some of the goody goods like you have from the Yeah. So I really got into this about maybe like, man, it's about like maybe 15 years ago, right around the time uh uh what is it, Power of the Secret, a secret, the secret came out. Yeah, the secret, yeah. I really yeah. liked that book and that really opened a lot of eyes. Uh, a lot of my, a lot of, uh, opened my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't realize what was actually going on in our, in our physical world. And it was also another movie that came out. I don't know if you remember, it was, I think it was a documentary. It's like, what the bleep do you know? Bro. Yeah. Remember that thing? Dude. I remember the first time watching that. I was like, what? Like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> but then I went, I went away. I started taking more like classes on spirituality and, and they, a lot of the spirituality classes, what they do is they mix in quantum physics because you have to understand some people are like, for me, I'm very like, I have a good imagination, which makes me good at visualization. Mm -hmm. But I also want to know the why behind it and how it actually works. Mm -hmm. So I really dove into a lot of quantum physics. I mean, of course, it's like, you know, we get really start getting into the hairy stuff of quantum physics that goes above my intellect, you know, mm -hmm. but like the basics of quantum physics. So what you need to understand, I think that just to start off at, at the very basic, there's no such thing as 
solid matter. Right. Matter is taken to meet a solid substance, whereas energy is meant to be a force of some sort. So everything in our universe is frequency, it's, it's energy. Science now knows that, like the electrons, for example, that spin in the energy field around the nucleus of the atom, and the nucleus itself are made up of nothing more than just kind of like oscillating energy grids. Yeah. So solid matter in the strict construction of the term does not even exist. Yeah. You know, Rather, like atomic structure is composed of oscillating energy grids that's surrounded by other oscillating energy grids, which orbit at like such high frequencies. So we can't, we can't even, we can't even see it. So basically matter is something that's really like slow frequency that kind of like is solid, like the, like the, or laptop around now the wall around it. But if you look at under, like under a high intense microscope, it's just vibration. It's just electrons vibrating at high frequencies, which is pretty fascinating, right? It's fascinating. It is you know, fascinating. Like and, in, and another thing, kind of like the kind of keep going down the rabbit hole like everything in this universe is frequency and energy and information and we have things like sound and light and they kind of fit in this spectrum and this spectrum is the total amount of light and sound frequencies that can possibly exist in our universe yeah. so you need to understand that as we as humans can only perceive a small part of this spectrum for example out of all the sound frequencies that possibly exist humans can only perceive 1% of what we hear. Right. The same goes for light. Actually, light is a lot, lot, lot deeper. I guess that's the word. 0.003% of all the lights that we see is what actually is there. So basically what I'm breaking that down to is every 1,000 colors that are out, I'm sorry, colors, every, uh, every 1,000 colors out there, there's only three of them that we see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So the reason I'm telling you this is because what we can observe with the physical senses is just a tiny part of what is actually happening around it or happening around us. Yeah. So how is this related to like manifestation? Because manifestation is from the non-physical world. Our sense are, our senses are not able to detect or observe everything that is actually going around us. Mm. So that that's a huge part. And also understand that science, in a way, it is defined in our physical world is that it is limited by only the physical senses. So science will never be able to capture everything because our limitations are restricted by those physical senses. Does that make sense? It makes yes. So, so right. yes, what what I'm hearing is is like in all this, right? Based on frequency, like frequency, um, will like everything is a frequency. Yes. It doesn't matter what frequency it is. And also at the same time, while everything is a frequency, we as human beings can be limited by our senses. Yes. Just keep sense. in mind, frequency, everything that has a frequency has information. Right. Right. You know, right. frequency, information, energy. Kind of think of all those things as synonymous. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So, you know, as you say that, right, it's, it's something that, for people that are listening, I want you to think about dog whistles. <laughs> like you, that's that's the first thing that popped up my head when I heard when I was uh, learning about this stuff. Yeah, me I was too. Like, right? Dogs learning more than us, right? And because it, 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 yeah. like, it was, it was, it was able to give it, it gave me the opportunity to really apply what I was learning when it comes to frequencies. Because this was the thing, like I had learned about this when it came to chakras and whatnot, like different frequencies also. Like when it came to vibrational healing and sound healing with different frequencies, like what it can impact, like different energy centers. So when I started really diving into that, and that's <clears throat> that's when I came up upon um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Mm. He talked about like frequencies, like um, like visualizations, meditations. I recognize, like, damn, like everything is a frequency, and what are we aligned to? So I think it's important to note, like, even, for example, our site, like, there's so much more, like, I'm in a room right now. There's so much more in this room than what I see, right? Because, like, my, my, the frequency is going to say, okay, like, it's this, but, like, the thing is, is my human being, my human consciousness is aligned to certain frequencies that say, oh, this frequency is a desk. This frequency is glasses. This frequency is, how you doing, buddy? Um, this frequency is 
a chalkboard or a dry erase board, right? So it it has me understand and recognize that like, oh yeah, go ahead, man. Sure, you do your thing. It has me go and recognize that, wow, people, when we can start to visualize and then train ourselves to align to different frequencies, that's when we can start to create new realities, right? It's like yeah. one of the one of the coolest things like I I, I learned um when I was teaching yoga <clears throat> was my teacher took us through this sound meditation, right? And she had us practice like what we can really hear. So she would have, she would buy us down and then she'd like, okay, what's the first sound you hear? And it was like, okay, you know, identify it. What's the sec? what's the next sound? Identify it. What's the next sound? Identify it. What's the next sound? Now I'm training myself to reach different frequencies. Before I knew it, B, I was like, is that a cricket in Pennsylvania? <laughs> like what? But it was like, it was yeah. Big. And that's that's the thing that's beautiful about the visualization because when someone can be in this space, especially what you're talking about, these different frequencies, when I can start to train myself to align to a frequency that's outside of myself, that's when I can start to bring that in closer to me and make it yeah. my reality. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you you know more about this than me. I haven't st I haven't studied this in in a while. But uh, when I used to meditate, I used to have different hertz. And I remember it was like I think it was like four thirty two hertz. Is that yes, is that the bro. one? Okay, yes. so, so it was four thirty two hertz. And what was interesting about four thirty two hertz? That song by the Beatles, Imagine John Lennon. They have that in that hertz. So sometimes when I'm meditating, I use this. So I'll I'll be meditating. And just say, I can't get deep. I can't get deep. I'm working on my breath work, but I have too much internal dialogue. Yeah. I'll play that song in my head. And right away, I kind of like, my body goes to that 432. And it's yeah. like blast off after like five minutes of just kind of sitting there. Brother, and so, yeah. Powerful. And it's, it's, so I, I got to tell a funny story where I speak about frequencies <clears throat> and visualization. When I went through um, my, my, my hip surgeries, I remember uh, before I was like, okay, there's the frequency of healing, which is 432. So I said, okay, part of my rehabilitation is going to be like when I'm resting or when I'm doing my um, like my physical PT, I'm going to play 432 hertz and I'm going to visualize that the frequency, thank you, brother, the frequency is healing my body, mm -hmm. aligning, like moving in and out of my cells, in my bones, in these new parts and helping them to come together as one. Mm -hmm. Brother, I really believe that that's part of what helped me heal so well. And so when I would meet other people that were going through the hip surgery, uh, they were like, hey, Paul, you got any advice? I'm like, yeah, listen to 432 hertz. They were like, what? I thought you were going to tell me like Musa. Nah, bro, yeah, do all that. <laughs> and here's this link. Listen to this, bro, because it, it's the frequencies again. These are healing frequencies. And also there are healing frequencies and there are frequencies that are destructive. Like a lot of the music that's out there right now has destructive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Frequencies, right. And I bring this up because yeah. the healing frequencies and the destructive coming back to what I was saying before, a lot of the situations that I, I perceived as sour in my life, I was on mm -hmm. that destructive frequency. Yeah. See? Had to switch it over to this frequency. I don't know why I'm sure. just gesture, but it, it is what it is, man. There's actually a cool video. You can search this on YouTube. It's Greg Braden. He's doing this uh, um, lecture. It's probably about like maybe a good 15 years old. And I wrote I, one of the first books that kind of got me on this was a book called The Divine Matrix. And basically, he so Greg Braden's background. He's a he was a, from NASA. He was like a NASA scientist or something like that. Turned kind of spiritual guru. And he studied all these, like, I mean, he was up in the Tibetan, studying with Tibetan monks and understanding, like, he was always asking questions, like, what's the, what's the, you know, what's the purpose of life and understanding, like, with the world and everything like that. Yeah, he's like a so he, ascended master, man. Yeah. 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 He was a cool guy. Yeah. Cool guy. And uh, he, one of his videos, he, he was shown where he was talking about this woman and it's out there on YouTube that this woman had like a, like a tumor in her in her body like around like her around her solar plexus and the doctors in the U u.s wouldn't operate anymore like you know it's nothing we can do you know you're just gonna have to pass on she's like i'm not I'm not taking no for an answer yeah. and she found this hospital out in china that she went out there 
and they had her in a room on an operating table, live scan of like a, like a CAT scan of the tumor at the in, in her. It was like the size of like, you know, probably like a tennis ball. And they had, they brought in four monks and they were all chanting with her. And she was like, hundred percent believed that she was going to get healed. All five of them were chanting together. And you see the tumor on the screen. It just starts to like, it's almost like glitches out. It starts glitching out and then it starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller until within like a few minutes, it's totally gone. To us, like the you know the, the Western society, we're like, yeah, it's bullshit. You know that that didn't happen. But they've been healing people like that for thousands of years. <laughs> you, know? you know, it's just not mainstream anymore. You yeah. know, and unfortunately, like you know, you know, sickness is one of the things that you know makes a lot of money. So they don't they don't want that to kind of get out. You know, but like and we've had this conversation before. Like you know. You know, if I break my arm or, you know, I need a major surgery done, I'll go to a doctor, but for general health and make me try to live longer. I'm not talking with, you know, and your average doctor. Are you kidding me? I'll get more sick taking their advice. You know, I'd probably, you know, you know, there's a lot of other modalities I would do, but I thought that was very interesting for the viewers out there. Listen, as you can just look this up too. It's pretty cool. Look it up. And B, you bring up a really great point. It's so, it's so powerful that now more science is mm-hmm. backing up this if the efficacy of these yeah. frequencies and like listen when you talk about these have been doing for thousands of years if 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 you look up tibetan singing bowls it's not like they made them mm. in y2k yeah they've been around for thousands and thousands of years yeah. like even when you talk about when you talk about chanting um like even like you know um kirtan right like for that it's like you know you do chants and like um you know with music and things like that these carry mm-hmm. vibrations, right? These carry frequencies. Yeah. I, I do want to, I want to give, I want to, I want to steer back into the visualization because this is, you know, the frequencies are an important part of it. But I want to come back to something that you said when you were talking about this woman. I heard you say she believed that this was going to heal her. So I want us, I want us to mm-hmm. touch a little bit on how important belief is in the visualization and what it can be like to create belief with the visualization. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, belief is, uh, that that's everything. If you, if you have any doubt whatsoever, you know, you, you need to, you know, <laughs> I don't know what you need to do, but it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you gotta have to have, like I was told you, you have to have an amazing imagination. You have to, in maybe in the beginning, if you're one of those people that are very, you know, just left brain people where you need like scientific proof, mm-hmm. you know, maybe sit down and like, you know, watch a few videos on quantum physics, yeah. learn, see, see, see how quantum physics has actually healed people, start getting a belief because this stuff is not mainstream, you know, the, our, the mainstream doesn't want you to heal, it's you heal yourself, they don't make any money if you heal yourself, you know, that's one of the, I think it was one of the one of the important things that we're doing here, you and I, Paul, is like is showing people how they can heal themselves without having to, you know, go to the doctor and get a pill for everything out there, you know? So I think the main thing is you have to, you have to believe. And if you understand that everything is energy, everything is information, everything is frequency and it is, and there's different, like in quantum physics, it shows that there's different layers of dimensions out there. Yeah. Like you actually, you're, you're living multiple lives at one time. You just can't see it. You know, there's no such thing as past, present, future. Everything is all existing at once under different dimensions. Doctor you Street. know, that gets into a little deeper topic. But once you understand that, you have 100% knowledge and you have 100%, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, uh, like you just understand it that it's going to work. You have no doubt whatsoever. You have 100% confidence that it's going to work. And your outside external environment is influenced by your internal environment. Yep. You know, if you're having, if you're going through a lot of shit. That means you, you, the inside of you is garbage. You know, you know, sometimes you have to go through shit to grow, you know, you know, flowers don't grow and uh, <laughs> have a manure, right? <laughs> you know, but Take take that as, you know, but if you're going through life all the time, you know, and you're just constantly getting like shit on left and right, 
there's something wrong with your thoughts and your and your visualization is off. You, you're not you're not you're not you're not thinking that it's possible to have a good life ahead of you, or you're not you're always you're always thinking of wrong things. You're always too much anxiety, too much you know depression, too much whatever it is, mm. you know. So but, you, be, you, I know I went off on a little bit of engine there, but no, you didn't. And actually, I think it was I'm I'm happy you did because what I'm recognizing in my question. It's not even about belief. It's more about the imagination and experience. So like, yeah. because if someone, if someone can imagine something and then mm -hmm. follow the thread of what the experience could be like, yeah, then that's, it's, I think it's more right to bring a it's a it's a more fertile ground to bring about that environment that they want because sometimes belief yeah. is a tricky thing man it's like because if I focus and and I'm realizing the the error in that question if I'm focusing on like I got to believe it I'm going to be ice skating uphill because my belief yeah. system may already be trash but if I can be like, well, yeah. well, let's imagine what it would be like for me to have that 1976 Par Porsche Targa with the BBS rims. What would it be like for me <laughs> to hear that car grumble when I started up? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. With stiff suspension. Yeah. So, dude, even I just I just did that. I'm like, yo. <laughs> dude. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's is, more it's more than just believing, right? There's a few I, steps that we're going to talk about. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, let's go. Hey, let's go. Into you know, and I think that was the problem with the with the power of the secret. With the secret, yeah, right. Everyone's just sitting at home, quitting their jobs on the couch, and be like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to become a millionaire." And they're like, "Yeah," <laughs> they're losing their house. I'm like, "Oh, this shit sucks. It doesn't work." It doesn't <laughs> you know? work it's like because you did it's nothing. not like that. It doesn't work like that. You know, <laughs> it's like that old Bible uh, passage: "Faith without works is dead." Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, if you're gonna have faith in something, you still got work for that junk. Shut yeah, come on, man. That's it. Child, please. So, B, let's go into some of the steps about like visualization, right? And I and I know we wanted to talk a little bit about the manifesting piece. You want to dive into a little bit a bit of that first before we go into like some of the manifestation, because I know that's like a big that's a big buzzword, manifest yeah. Your reality. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, so, so let's, let's talk you about know. Piece a little bit. The, one of the things, the main things we got, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the, the main thing, you know, emotion, the frequency that you put out in the world is based on, on your emotion. So how to actually use this knowledge to manifest things in your life? Again, you want you are the basically you are the radio, and the frequencies that you emit is the emotions that you're feeling, and the universe has all these realities with different channels and you're trying to tune into that right channel. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. The, our emotions is that frequency, like this multiple, probably millions of different possibilities for you out there. And your goal is to manifest that particular frequencies, which is going to give you the life you want. And you need to do that by having the correct emotion behind it. Mm -hmm. So the first step is actually like to express your desire, tell the universe, like, which reality you actually want to tune into. And when you start to feel that emotion of your desired reality is when you're tuned into the reality that you want. So for example, like you were saying before, you're like, Oh, I want that. I want that car. I can, I'm sitting in the car. I can feel it rumbling. You know, I'm, I'm feeling awesome. Like uh, I'm excited. You know, I'm going to go for a ride. I'm like, I'm pumped and everything like that. That's the first step is aligning that. But all of a sudden, like what happens if you're like, oh, I want to be a millionaire or whatever. And all of a sudden, that brings you stress and anxiety. You're, the frequency is off. You're, you're, you're not matching. You need to, to put yourself in that millionaire position. Because if you're a millionaire, you're not going to have that stress. You're not going to have that anxiety at that point. I'm not saying millionaires don't have stress and, and, and uh, anxiety. Right. But if you're broke and thinking that you're, you're going to have all this money or you're going to be a millionaire... That shouldn't give you stress and anxiety. If it does, that means your emotions are off. Your frequency is off. You're tuning into the wrong reality. And it's going to just bring you more stress and more anxiety. So tune your emotion into it. Mm -hmm. That's basically step one, the, the desire part and having that correct frequency. So B, I just want to pause for a second because... Questions around that? Huh? Yeah. What's that? 
that's basically step one and that's basically step one and two express your desire and step two is basically align it so, so your emotions I, are your frequency here yeah yeah so dude i think it's i want to pause on a set of something because um it was something that i had in my notes that you touched on right about this expressing your desire and then what was the second piece you said uh, aligning yourself with your emotion to that frequency aligning so uh, w what i had in my in my um when i was looking this up I was noticing that part of visualization for me anyway is being open to deserving what I visualize. Okay. Because what I found in the past be is that what, why I like, especially like maybe like 15 years ago when I like maybe even longer than when I started getting meditation, I was like, Oh, this shit doesn't work. Bye. Like mm -hmm. whatever I was visualizing, I was failing to, think I deserved it right like I was like oh man I'm gonna be freaking wealthy but there was a part of me that was just like I don't know if I deserve this though and what I'm hearing you say which is right on man like you got to align the energy align the emotion yeah. to what you want now here's that's that's one piece coming back to expressing the desire people take the time to figure out what you desire what you want, okay? Because B, I, I really think a lot of people, they could talk a whole good game, but I think most people fail to recognize and acknowledge what they truly want, bro. Like what they truly want versus what they think they're supposed to want. You follow yeah. me? Exactly, so, yeah. I think it's important for us to really recognize and hunker down on that piece because once that piece comes in, like, yo, look, even I was watching this um this clip by Trevor Noah and Oprah. Mm -hmm. And Trevor and Trevor was asking Oprah about success and and Oprah said something. She was like, the first step is you gotta know what you want. Right? What do you want? That's a tough question for people to ask for people to answer. Because the because you know you know how you get that answer you have you have to uh, as Paul Check would say you have to visit Doctor Quiet you have to sit by yourself you have to have introspective knowledge you have to you have to meditate otherwise you're just going to want what everyone else in the world wants <laughs> you know and the reality is you're not a carbon copy of everyone else exactly you might want different things you know like you know for me. What I want, I want peace of mind. I want loving people around me. I want to travel. I'm gonna make a little money, though. I can come and go as I want because freedom is my most important things. That's that's me, man. That's 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 what that's what I want, and I I align my values to my goals, to my dreams, and I align my values to the people I hang out with, which kind of is going to get into step three afterwards, which we'll talk about that. Well, so you had expressed desire and then align the emotion. Express yeah. I was one, step one. Align the emotion is two. What do you got yeah. to do, bro? Detach yourself from your from your current life. Oh. That was huge for me. I cut so many people out of my life that are just played a victim, you know, and I, I've been friends with these people for years. Some, some of these childhood friends, and I, I had to. I don't, I don't want like, it's like, you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, just in case any of them are listening, I just don't want to like, uh, I don't, I don't want that like film on me, you know, it's like, it's almost, it's like almost like taking a shower, then you're, then you're rolling around in the mud again when you're hanging out with them, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you're, you're never going to, you're never going to be clean. You're never going to have that focus, Dude, you know, brother, I, these, these points, man, are tip top because I think there there is a difficulty in detaching. Mm -hmm. And it's like what you just said. It's, you know, <laughs> bro, and I hope I, my apologies for cutting off. I just got, it just like, I think it's important for people to understand that it's okay to detach from that. Yeah. Thing that's not conducive to what you want. Okay? Yeah. I want you to be aware, like you detaching, and I'm speaking to myself because it's something I have to be aware of. You detaching from someone or something is free of determining how you love them or love love that thing. You can still love them a tremendous amount, yet sure. it's imperative to love yourself more 
to get what you want to align to that visualization. Yeah. But when you're hanging out with people that don't share the same values, morals, ethics as you, you know, you're going to create more people around you with the opposite of what you're looking for. You're going to create certain circumstances that you're looking for yep. that you're not looking for, yep. you know? And again, how you feel on the inside, you're, the universe is always going to show you what it, what, 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 how you're feeling on the inside, whether it be, you know, you know, you know, attracting bad exes in your life or girlfriends in your life, whether it be getting into accidents, car accidents, you yeah. know, all this stuff, you know, the, the universe tries to wake you up sometime. And if you, and that's another thing about like, you know, I got this from Paul check with Dr. Quiet is your body's always giving you these subtle hints, sub subtle hints, like do this, do this, do this. But if you're not paying attention, the universe is going to smack the shit out of you. And next thing you know, you're in a car accident with a broken leg. And now you have to be quiet. Now you can move around or the or universe is going to give you a disease. You know, then I know sort of people out there are listening just, oh, oh, so you, uh, I'm the reason I have cancer. I'm the reason. Yeah, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> I hate to tell you, but yeah, you know, take responsibility for yourself. Don't play the victim role. You know, it's difficult for people. That's difficult for people. I like B, I've, I've come to the conclusion that that a lot of people want someone else to blame because it it takes the responsibility off of them. Like if something doesn't go right, it's like when it's like going out and being like with a bunch of friends, like, Hey, where you guys want to go? I don't care wherever you want. And then mm -hmm. you pick someone that's like, this place sucked. Well, mother, why didn't you say something? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Now we're at Applebee's for the next two hours, man. Right. Now we're at Applebee's. Oh. Yeah. You, you didn't say anything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Bro, this is so so coming to this place, right? And and I, I want to bring it back to the frequency piece, right? Because B, mm -hmm. when you're talking about, you know, if you're hanging out with friends or you're hanging out with people that fail to share the same values as you, you're you're aligning more to that collective frequency. So yes. that's gonna keep you out of alignment with that vision that you have for yourself. Mm -hmm. so it's it's a must that you got to detach otherwise man it's a train wreck bro yeah <laughs> that's it man yeah <laughs> and listen you know I, and i'm just i'm speaking for myself here because like and and while we're, we're giving tips here you know i think the beauty about what brian and i talk about here is that we've been through life life has been lifing with us man we've been through some up times we've been through down times We've learned a lot about ourselves along the way. So as we're talking to you all about these things, like we're talking about it because like, yo, we, we learned it. Like a lot of times the hard way. Um, yeah. But like we learned it. So we want to see you get what you want. And part of you getting what you want is also you taking responsibility for your shit. 100%. You know what I mean? You got to take responsibility for your shit, man. Like, so if you're yeah. visualizing something, what is your responsibility to make that happen? You know, yeah. what is it, bro? Like, if I'm saying, like, yo, I want to get a Porsche. Like, okay, first of all, I'd make sure, like, okay, I want to get the money to get the Porsche. And then I'm going to have to, like, figure out, like, where the, where the hell am I going to find that Porsche? A 1976 Target with, like, BBS rims? Yeah. Like, I'm probably going to have to make that. <laughs> Put it together. But yeah. I'm using that as an example, but I mean, it's, it comes to anything. It's about the responsibility. Like if you're going to visualize something and you're willing to align to the emotion and you're willing to detach and align to a frequency, then you're taking responsibility for what's going to happen in your life. Yeah. And if you're having a hard time um, aligning your emotions that are positive, that's getting you excited, or you're not where you are in life. What I would do, or personally I would do, or if I started getting like a lot of like circumstances that didn't align my values and I would start attracting people, I would do some dark, I would do some shadow work, man. Start working on your shadows. Like uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically things that are like in your subconscious uh, that are holding you back that you don't even realize. There's a lot of courses out there you can do. You can do YouTube channels, like work on yourself. Because remember, I mean, we already talked about this three times, I think three or four times, like your, your external environment is dictated by your internal environment, you know? So, so below, do, some, do some work on your, do some work on yourself. That's one of the biggest, you know, mentioned this a few times is one of the biggest things. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of psychedelics, man. 
you do a good dose with good people and you have a shaman that's there with you that knows what they're talking about, you know, one, one trip is man, that's like, that's like 20 years of therapy. And I'm not even kidding. Not even kidding. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it gets to the root cause of the problem really quick. And then, you know, you take that with you, you know, it'll shift you. It'll shift the frequency. Oh yeah. It'll, it'll, you, yeah. You know? I, think we might, I think it's, I think it's coming close to the time when we do an episode on plant medicine, man. Well, I'd love that. You know, because I think we, we should we should do it. We should do a live pre presentation, <laughs> fly out to like oh. Ecuador rainforest and, you know, have a camera crew. <laughs> hey, that's the vision. Yeah. If anybody that's wants to vision. come drop a comment in there in the, you know, <laughs> Listen, let, let's start. Let, let's let's put this visualization to play. Who wants yeah. to come for that trip? Put oh. in the comments. Yeah, if you're interested in doing something like that, we we could we could put together something. That would that be pretty badass. Get like ten of get like ten of us out there, bro. And then oh. we, we do a pre, a during footage, and then an after. Mm -hmm. Definitely, man. Yo, what was that like for you guys? Because I'm telling you, listen, the first time, I gotta tell you, the first time I ever did mushrooms, I, it deepened my ability to visualize something. Because it opened up my it opened up portals for me, like portals in my sight, my psyche, my hearing, um, not so much as my sense, like my what I smell, but like it, or taste. But in those different ways, it got me to see like, wow, there's something else here that's alive in me. So, yeah, sometimes you. So the thing, the reason why I bring this up, sometimes with visualization, you may need an aid. Oh, easily, yeah. Yeah, and it could be music. Yeah. It could be plant medicine. I mean, Brie, what other, what other, do you know some other, like, what are some other things you think of that may be a, a tool for visualization? Well, I think the fourth thing after after we detach ourselves would be put action in. That's It's huge. Do something every single day that's going to get you closer to that goal, you know? For me, we've talked about this in the past. Like I wake myself up three, four hours before my first client. I have a client at nine o'clock I got to get to. I'm up like five o'clock in the morning, five, six o'clock in the morning. And I'm working on something, always working on something, whether it's like maybe I'm reading a self-help book and I get something out of that. I'm trying to educate myself. I'm trying to get me closer to that goal. Uh, one of the reasons I started this YouTube channel with Paul is like, I want to educate myself more. I just, I just don't want to be like uh, like a talking head. Like I just want to like I want to like get this out there to a lot of people, you know. And I, I a lot of the stuff that we implement is stuff that we've used in our in our in our past, and we've that we've learned from like amazing gurus out there, and it transformed our lives to the positive. So always like try to every day do something, whatever it was like. Wake up in the morning, even if you don't know what the hell you want to do. Just Google something, you know, YouTube something, you know, read a book, do something. You know, Universal slowly, like every time you take a step, just say your goal that you want that, say you want to be a millionaire is right here and you're over here. Every time you take a step over here, the universe is taking a step that much closer to you. You take two steps, the universe is taking two steps, and eventually you're going to get there. Be patient. And we talked about this before with um, what's that, uh, what's that book? Um, Think and grow rich. Oh, and wow. yeah, we talked about this before. And I always, 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 always take, I always take this from this book. Is that he basically this guy? Andrew, long story. Um, Napoleon Hill. He interviewed five hundred of the wealthiest people in the U.S. And every single one of them, without an exception, hit rock bottom right before they got there. So the reason I'm telling you this is, as you're taking a step, you're gonna start getting to a point. It's kind of like the hero's journey too, which is another. Episode so we're going to be shooting soon yeah. is right before you get there you're going to get frustrated like this ain't going nowhere i'm i don't, I don't see any i don't see any headwind i'm just getting tired because i'm waking up early it's costing me money because i'm doing this course and blah 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 blah. and then people quit be different than 99 percent of those people just focus on one more day just one more day one more day then you're going to start get that snowball going and then sooner or later later is an avalanche universe meets you right in the middle boom got your goal it's, it goes without fail. Like you said before, which kind of like, you know, struck me a little bit. It was like, do I deserve it? Not only do you deserve it, that's part of, that's the reason you're put on this planet. You're built Earth for right. success. The universe wants to see you succeed. Yep. You know, the problem is the universe, God, source, it's unconditional love. 
meaning it's not going to say no to anything you say. So whether if you feel like shit or you're feeling bad or you're feeling the victim role, the universe is going to give you that. Right. You know, it has unconditional love for you. If it didn't give you that, that means there'd be conditions around it. You know, it's unconditional love. That's what God is. That's what source is. That's what love is. So pro pre-program yourself and the universe will always want you to succeed. You every every single part of us is a every single person out there is a piece of God. Yeah. We're perfect in some way. Yeah. You know, there's no difference between really, there's no difference between Paul and Jesus, Paul and Buddha. You know, we all have the potential to do that. They just vibe in at a different way and they understand it differently than most of us. Dude. Mic drop. Boop. Yep, that was a mic drop. That was you a know. mic drop for real. People, please hear what Brian's saying. Pause and record. Listen to that again. Pause and record. Listen to that again. Because this right here is the power of visualization. I'm a, like, when you look at Jesus, Buddha, these different figures, Gandhi, what's most of the positions that they're in? Some sort of meditation position. Patience, yeah. quiet, they're sitting with themselves. They're, yeah. they're chilling with Dr. Quiet. You know why? Because now they can start to allow things to come to them, allow them to visualize things, allow them to hear messages, hear insights. We all have this capability, people. Mm-hmm. The key question is, are you willing to tap into it? Yeah. That's, That's tough. We have, we have a lot of external um, devices that distract us. Very much so. You know, so it's very, it's very, it's very tough. Yeah. A lot of us without realizing we're, we're addicted to those external devices. Oh. You know, we're addicted to working, you know, crazy hours or, or whatever, whatever it is, being stuck in toxic relationships or trying to, you know, work these hours so you you can afford a car that you, you know, so you can keep up with the Jones, whatever it is, you know, it's, it's tough. It's, it's it tough. That's part of the journey, part of the journey. It is man. Like, so I want to offer something here, right. Um, for people that, that follow us that are watching this, I want you to commit to taking a certain amount of time each day to visualize or to create a vision. I'm detached. I think both of us really are detached from how long you do it. It's a matter of you doing it consistently. Yeah. 30 days, right? For 30 days. 10 minutes. Do 10, 10 minutes. minutes. <laughs> Jesus. <You spend, laughs> listen, bro, here, here's why. And listen, I'm, I want to give context around why I'm saying this, right? Because I, um, and it's alignment with the distraction piece. So I think I was telling you, like, I've been doing my sitting with self, right? My me time stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that consistently. Um, well, actually, I missed, I missed some days. And I recognized when I missed the days, it was easier for me to get distracted. The days that I do it, it's like I'm aware of my distractions and I'm bringing more focus. And I noticed the other day, I was like, oh my God, man, my phone is a massive distraction. Mm -hmm. My phone itself, right? Because as much as I'm, oh, as much as I'll be like, oh, you know what? Um, hold on. <laughs> There's always one. There's always one. Always one, bro. <laughs> um, so. I knew that was coming. I was like, I heard the mic. I was like, yeah. I heard people talking. Um, but I recognize because like I, I'm doing a better job of trimming down my social media consumption, right? Even though it's like, okay, I know I got to post, but it's like getting in, getting out, responding, and then getting out. Yeah. And I notice like, okay, when I treat when I trail that down, or when I when I stream that down, I still go to my phone for like, let me check email, let me check my rocket money, let me check this. I'm like, how the hell do I focus, man? Mm -hmm. So I got to have these spurts in the day where it's like, okay, my phone's going to go over here in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And okay, boop, 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 I hear my alarm. Okay, I'll go check my stuff. 
Yeah. You know, man, bro, like people. So I'm I'm coming back. People, take take 10 minutes. 10 minutes. If you're like, that's too long, just deal with it. 10 minutes, yeah. sit your ass down. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna want to get up, you're gonna want to get water, you're gonna want to do all this stuff that you probably don't even need to do. Sit your ass down and stay there for 10 minutes. Just think about something you want. Think about what what you could want. Think about what it would feel like. And listen, yep, see, now there's two. Damn distraction. Think about what Brian was saying, right? One, express your desire. Two, align with the emotion. Three, detach from life, which is the visualization, right? That 10 minute time. Yeah, and get rid of like external forces or external people and circumstances that don't align with your values. That don't align. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Put yeah. them off to the side. Because some people are like, I can't get rid of them. Okay, it's cool. Just put them off to the side for right now. Put them yeah. off to the side. Stay on your path. And then for take action. Action, man. Yeah. Faith without works is dead, man. Faith without works is dead. B, is there yeah. anything like we failed to mention today about the visualization? that you wanted to mention? I'm sure we'll, we'll realize it once we stop the recording, you know? <laughs> but we don't talk about that. Oh, shit. shit. No, but I want to I hear from you guys. Drop comments. I want to I know, like, uh, I want to I know what your goals are and what actions you're taking every single day that you normally weren't, weren't taking. Yeah. I'd, I'd be curious. Jesus, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big goal setter. So maybe there's a goal out there I didn't uh, I didn't think of or like oh okay that's cool and what action are you taking and maybe you're maybe you're like I want to I want to make more money maybe your goal is to make more money I'm like oh I'm doing this action I'm like oh that's pretty cool and when every time you put an action in there I'll tell you the action I did today and we'll kind of feed off that and be like oh it might be a good idea we kind of maybe start a dialogue yeah so drop some comments in there man help us out too like we're not you know we can always learn something from everyone you know. Dude, and this is what this is about, man. It's collective community, man. Let's learn to grow from each other. It's beautiful, bro. That's man, it. Brian, another one in the books, bro. There's another one, man. And another one. And another one, yeah. Who's that? <laughs> DJ Khaled? DJ Khaled. Anywho, people, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is... Man, you know, I, I'll be, I'm going to share a little bit about um, when we had our meeting on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, B and I, uh, Brian and I, we're, we're really focused on bringing you all the best. And we're going to be expanding, like, the things that we put out there coming soon. So, you know, we, we really, we're really settling into and appreciating working with each other. And also your feedback, because it's letting us know that, you know, our vision for this podcast is becoming reality. So I highly encourage you like, comment, share, help other people that can benefit from this information, get access to this information by taking action and doing your part. If you, if you find value in what we're saying, please share this information. All right. B. Definitely appreciate you. Yep. Yeah. All right, everybody. Okay, nothing else, man. Yeah, what's that? Nothing else. Yes, Peace sir. out, man. I appreciate you all. Bless up, everybody. Peace. <laughs> I appreciate you all, man.